I must confess that it's been very useful. Both training are useful and they are very complementary to each other. So uh, first let us see the difference between the training pattern. Uh, although uh, it, I think the UK uh, higher surgical training, we call it in orthopedics, has changed over the year. But overall, the training uh, requirement is, is roughly same. So uh, when I was doing my training, we used to do three years as a junior residency and then three years as a senior residency. I'm sure it's the same, still same? Uh, we are here, yes, three years of residency and three years of registrarship or uh, senior residency. Yes, yeah, so uh, in England, uh, it's very s uh, similar, the junior and senior residency as far as orthopedics is concerned, but this is all combined as one uh, used to call uh, specialty training in orthopedics. Yeah. So what happened in, uh, in, in broadly speaking in, in England, you do uh, two years of we call foundation training where you raise your basic foundation, which is, uh, it, 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 we can say that the internship which you used to hear for uh, one, one year, year has been divided into a slightly uh, longer period and then you go to different specialty, medical, surgical and everything and that's your foundation. You're building foundation as a, as, as a basic doctor. So you're getting your ward experience, your communication skill and those, th those things are good. Then you, uh, try to select a generic uh, branch, say you want to go to surgical side. Yeah? So then you do what is we call co-training, which is for another two years. Okay. And which doesn't need to be in orthopedics if you want to be orthopedic surgeon. It may be that one of that posting for six months could be in orthopedics uh, and the other could be in uh, in a &E or or other surgical specialty. But those are your co-training in, in surgery. And, and the, these are, after that, you opt for special heart surgical training, a specialized training in orthopedics. And that's where the selection process starts. So during your core training, uh, you, you have to go to all the uh, surgical specialty, but also you have to finish your F MRCS exam. So you have to remember that MRCS is, is an exam to be uh, finished uh, by the end of your core training, it's a re it's a prerequisite for your uh, uh, for entering into specialist training. Yeah. Specialist training we start uh, we we count years from uh, from core training. So core training one and two you already done two years. So what we call the specialist training is called ST three, and ST three is where the interview uh, happens. Uh, some uh, specialty uh, have got run through training where mean they can have their core training combined with specialty training. So you're you when you're doing your core training, you are you are assured at that time that you will run through all your orthopedics. But in orthopedics uh, in UK at the moment, who knows in future it might change. And a few years ago, actually, a few few batches went through run through training. At the moment, the current situation is two year core training. And then you go to ST3 interview uh, where you ha have to have your MRCS done. And then ST training happens up to year eight. So e you start with year three mm. and finish with year eight. So that's your six years of training. Uh, that's purely in orthopedics. During that uh, training, uh, uh, unlike my experience in orthopedics that I am uh, doing an MS under one supervisor and just working in one hospital and then maybe a senior residency in same hospital or different hospital. So that is a slightly different in UK. In UK what happens is that uh, you, you are assigned a deanery, not a hospital. So the deanery could be that uh, I'll give an example because I done from Delhi that there is a Delhi deanery. So I've been assigned my MS in Delhi deanery. So I will, uh, I'll be assigned my heart surgical training in, in one deanery. Among Delhi deanery, we will, we will uh, pick up hospitals who are capable of training. Uh, we, we, there'll be continuous assessment of them and, and review that whether they are capable, whether enough uh, consultant there who can train. So for example, in Delhi, we might pick up uh, 10 hospitals which are capable of uh, training you. So which could be right from all institutes, to, uh, medical science to all other medical colleges, but not necessarily just teaching hospital. It could be a non-teaching hospital, but they have got fantastic uh, number of patients coming. And if there are teacher who are 
uh, willing to train and they are they they have passed the uh, re requirement then those hospitals are also become uh, where you can be posted so uh, once you got into a deanery then you are posted uh, into these uh, eight ten different uh, training centers and those are allotted a yearly basis depending on how you're doing and what is your requirement so some center may be heavy on hand surgery, some pediatric surgery, some spinal surgery, some trauma. So the basic aim is for you to get uh, experience of all these uh, specialty. Uh, whereas uh, I think in, in, in here, the MS or junior and say you just remain in one hospital, is that still? Yeah, that so yes, uh, you say, uh, ask for that hospital or that college and mm -hmm. you remain there. For the three years. Yeah. So uh, you may be rotated in different units in that hospital. Yes. But you remain to that hospital. Yes. Yeah, so uh, in 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 your uh, surgical in orthopedics training, you will have to, you will have to be initially used to be very strict about every six month uh, that you have to change your uh, e even if you stay in the hospital for one year, you probably will change supervisor uh, twice. Yeah, so and every trainee is given one clinical supervisor who will supervise his day to day work, uh, make sure that his logbook is okay, the procedure is doing is okay. And then there is an overall educational supervisor who will uh, make sure that his needs for education is uh, fulfilled. So there are two supervisors clinical supervisor and educational supervisor. And then they go through all these uh, different specialty in their six year of training. And there are uh, so-called the index procedures. So uh, the common procedures which you require, uh, uh, must for you to practice, are all being given in indexed. And then those are number are also, uh, are also a sign that you should be able to do uh, so many joint replacement independently. Uh, so th th you have to fulfill all that on six, uh, your six year of training. You have to fulfill all your subspecialty rotation. And uh, every year while you're doing the training, you are assessed on, uh, on sometime a case-based discussion, presenting a case, sometime a management, management discussion. And uh, every, after every year, uh, you go through a panel uh, where you are assessed whether you you use that year fruitfully and been successful before you get year than year next year. Okay, so it's a six year process uh, from ST three to ST eight. ST three uh, to ST eight, mm -hmm. but uh, six year process and you are being assessed yearly. It's not a formal exam like no no theory or no uh, practical exam. But uh, when you are posted with your clinical supervisor, you have to go through those assessments. They are all structured assessment. Mm -hmm. So suppose you are presenting a case, me I'm presenting a case for, uh, of a uh, bone loss in uh, total hip replacement. So how do you deal with it? So you will present me all the possibilities. What are the options? Uh, and we will we we will go through it. We already decided that this is a topic we're going to discuss. Then also your performance, suppose you're doing a, a, a intramedullary nail and you say, you, you come to me as a, say, I want to get assessed on this, uh, on today on my practical of intramedullary nailing. So what we'll do is we'll sit down, I'll have a formal paper with me. Like, uh, it's like an exam paper. Mm. So we'll know that, do you, do you know the indication of nailing? Have you consented the patient properly? Have your position is okay? So everything, all steps are written there for assessments. So have you used your x-ray properly? Have you communicated with the nursing staff properly? Have you asked for the instrument in a logical manner? It's not that you uh, started dreaming and then suddenly decided, oh, I need to go back uh, to do something different. Uh, have you wasted too many screws without because you 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 not been good with your measurements? Uh, and and if, if you've taken any sample from, uh, have you properly uh, given it to somebody and instructed them to keep the sample ready. After operation, have you written a clear-cut post-op plan for the patients? Uh, and then once you finish the surgery, have you discussed with the whole staff and everything?